What is going on everyone? Welcome to a brand new movie review. Today I'm going to be discussing the kid who would be king. If you guys are new here, consider hitting that like and subscribe button for all early movie reviews, geeky content over here on this YouTube channel. Plus you guys can also check out Sandwich on Films also down below because right in there you guys can get into advanced movie screens and check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. Kid Who Would Be King is a movie that I was kind of looking forward to due to the fact that this film is directed by Joe Cornish. If you guys don't know who Joe Cornish is, this guy has not directed a film since Attack of the Block, which is the film that really put John Boyega on the marker for everyone to look out for. Even the director itself. And the Block is one of those films that I always thought, looking back when I had first seen it, where I was like, oh, that's going to be one of those films that when I was younger, I'm going to look forward and I'll be like, oh, what was the title of that movie again? There was some kids fighting aliens. And I know there's a bunch of movies where kids are fighting aliens, but eventually me and my friends would finally land on Attack of the Block. Look at Attack of the Block and that's more of a cult classic now. Not everyone has seen that film, but for me at a certain age, genre and demographic, people are going to look back and be like, hey, that's kind of like a little cult classic, a hidden gem of this sense. I think the kid who would be king is going to be kind of in the same vein of Attack of the Block. And instead of aliens, it's going to be in the King Arthur culture within modern times with demons, skeletons, knights over the round table, and of course, again, the King Arthur tale. You've heard the King Arthur tale many, many times, but this is a unique spin and taste to it. Again, it takes place in our modern world nowadays. Also, a young kid who is a descendant of King Arthur. Him and a bunch of kids embark on an epic quest to thwart a demon played by Rebecca Ferguson. And it seems like that typical King Arthur tale that we've heard before, Knights of the Round Table story that you've heard before, but it does have that twist of being in modern days. And it also has the double twist of being directed by Joe Cornish, who puts his directing style to the test with this film once again. I really do feel his staple and stamp onto this film with the British humor that he performs throughout it, but also putting his just unique style Style. You know, there's not any other director out there where I was like, yeah, this feels like a Joe Cornish film. I've never said that before because it always just goes off to him. It's a fast paced moving film with vibrant colors in every single scene and the cinematography in here is out standing especially when we get to a lot of the action sequences that do take place at night the way that joe cornish decides to light up the sequences and have them be embraced by the younger kids in here is just one of a kind it's also kind of a risk taking on young kids these kids are around the ages of 12 to 15 and they do a phenomenal job in the roles that they are given especially our youngest lead lewis circus who is great he brings emotion to him where you can really relate to him and in this film each of our four main kids there is someone for you to relate to in a sense really like that Joe Cornish should put that into the script. Every kid in here really brings their A game and does a great job. I really say that for every movie out there with kid actors. I really found myself getting really enveloped and wrapped into these characters and to the story that was being told. It really is a perfect film for families and kids. The film ain't perfect and do not get me wrong on that. It is a fun, vibrant adventure within the round tables of the nights, but I do have some issues with it. Rebecca Ferguson is the villain of this film and She's very one-dimensional. She's very one-note. There's not much to her, and I don't really expect her character to have much. She's pretty much just the evil demon that's trying to take over the world, and... When you're looking at medieval tales, there's really no back history to any demons in a sense. They just want to take over the world. Nothing's really ever gone wrong. And I know there's some back history to why she wants to do it, but again, there wasn't enough delved into that. And not enough layers for her character where she does just come off one dimensional. Again, she's Rebecca Ferguson. She's great. But even with some of the ways that she looked in her human form, I wasn't 100% on board with and kind of just seemed like... The set design for her location where she was at was kind of just off to me. Again, that's just me per se, and this is more towards kids than 21 year old guy, but yeah. This is also a pro and a con for me. Patrick Stewart is in this film and he plays an older version of Merlin. There's a younger version of Merlin when he's going into his younger version because he has to be in that younger version. But if you have Patrick Stewart, why not just have him be... Patrick Stewart in the film because he was great in the moments that he was in and I wanted more of him and he, don't get me wrong the younger version of Merlin was actually pretty good and stole a lot of the scenes as well before we get to my final thoughts make sure to comment down below and tell me what your guys thoughts are on this film have you guys also seen Attack on the Block let's discuss it down below The Kid Who Would Be King is a very vibrant delightful little film that is going to be a hidden gem in the near future it has some great choreograph for the action sequences Joe Cornish really developed a really unique world that I would actually like 
like to go back to. Some great humor to it as well, and it finally leads up to the final battle in the end sequence. It is a one of a kind, and the vibrant colors that I was talking about earlier throughout the whole entire film magnified to a different level in this scene. Overall, really like the kid who would be king. It's a unique film that it kind of flips the King Arthur script and flips it onto a different type of way. And even though I would have liked a little bit more of the modern stuff and even some more stuff with Rebecca Ferguson's character and maybe even a little bit more Patrick Stewart, The Kid Who Would Be King is a great, delightful family film that you guys should definitely check out. Take your kids, take your family, take your young teens, or maybe if you're a babysitter, take them to the movies. I think they'll definitely enjoy it. So with all that said, I'm going to give The Kid Who Would Be King a B. This was a charming little surprise. I'm glad to see Joe Cornish is back on there. And I have to say this, I think you'd be a perfect person to take on the roles of Guardians of the Galaxy 3 since... Sadly, we're not going to be getting James Gunn. You know what your guys' thoughts are down below in the comments. I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. Thank you guys again so much for watching this. Hit that like and subscribe button. Check out Sandwich on Films, and I'll see you guys soon. Stay classy. <laughs>